Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dominant Species, which I actually just went and looked it up right before I started filming, is the number 23 best game in the world according to the rankings on BoardGameGeek. You know, players or you know, players from around the world who have voted on what the best games are have declared Dominant Species number 23 in the world. And that's a big deal. That's saying something. This is a hugely popular, very, very beloved game all about um, different animal species, species vying for dominance on the planet Earth right at the uh, dawn of the Ice Age as everybody's scrambling to try and protect themselves as the world gets completely frozen and over. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And wish me luck because this is a big, huge, complicated worker placement slash area control slash war game. I don't, I don't think it's officially classified as a war game, but it feels like war to me as all these species are going after each other trying to, um, you know, fight to the last to become the dominant species. All right, and now in this game, I will be playing as the plucky arachnids, which uh, nobody particularly likes. Ugh. And Jen, she'll be the lovable uh, mammals, who I guess, if history's anything to go by, did actually come out the Ice Age as the dominant species, although people could argue against that. But it's going to be mammals versus arachnids. Who is the winner? Well, let's start playing and find out. Now, in a nutshell, this game uh, it takes place over many rounds, a, a long time. It's a long game. Even as a two-player game, you can expect it to last upwards of two hours long, if not more. It's a big, long, sprawling, heavy game. And it, so it plays through many rounds, and the, the, each round is divided into two halves. First, there is the planning phase, which is worker placement. You can see over here, there are all these different little green eyeball spaces. Those are all the spaces you can place your workers. Uh, you can place them to try to grab initiative, or to spread abundance, or to avoid depletion, or to engage in speciation, or to do some migration, or to vie for domination. You know, there's a lot of different spots you can put all your workers. And what we're going to do in the first half of a round is, in turn order, place our workers. And now in a two-player game, each of us has seven of them. The more players you have, the fewer workers you get. If you go all the way up to a six-player game, each player only has three workers they get to place. But in a two-player game, you get to do a lot of stuff. After everybody has placed all of their workers on the board, we then go into the execution, where we do all those actions from top down, left to right. It's kind of Kalis style worker placement. And uh, most of these actions really have to do with us manipulating the main board, which is the Earth here, with all these different locations, trying to, to basically engage in an area control game. And you can see, I've got the game set up here. This is the standard setup, although the rules come with an alternate where you have a completely randomized world and randomized starting situation. But I'm just going with the with the standard easy peasy one, just to make things simpler for myself. And as you can see, at the beginning of the game, the arachnids, my, my guys, the green guys, they are doing very well here in the jungle. I've got two cubes, that means two different species of spider. I've got one species of spider over here in the wetlands, and I've got one over here in the forest. Now the reason it's one, two, and one is because at the beginning of the game, if you see here on my little arachnid chart, arachnids love grubs. That's what they like to feed on more than anything else. And so, here at the beginning of the game, because the jungle has access to two grubs, that means there's two arachnids here. The wetlands has access to one grub, and then some water and some grass. So that's why there's only one arachnid. And the forest has access to one grub, so that's why there's one arachnid. Now, meanwhile, if we look over here, the mammals, they love meat. Mm -mm -mm. Give us meat, they say. We're meat eaters, gosh darn it. And that's why over here in the mountains, where there's two where mountains has access to two meat, there happen to be two mammals. The desert has access to one meat, because you can see it's touching. This meat, you know, potentially can affect three different tiles. And so there's one mammal over here and one mammal over here in the forest. Now the interesting thing, over here in the jungle and the wetlands where I'm all by myself, I am the dominant species. The spiders are dominant. That's why we put these little, I put a cone here as just a quick visual reminder that I'm dominant in the jungle and the wetlands. Jen, meanwhile, is dominant in the mountains and the desert. However, nobody is dominant in the forest because and it has nothing to do with the fact that each of us only has one species. The dominant species is less about the number of cubes you have on the board and more about the number of resources your species have access to. I could have, you know, um, you know, six species, or I could have four species in this zone to compare to Jen's one species. But if Jen had access, let me grab one. If Jen had access to more meat, remember. 
My, my guys like grubs. All of my species only have access to one grub. But Jen's one species has access to two meat, and she loves meat. That means Jen would actually be the dominant species in this area. The number of unique species don't count. It's how well the species thrive. And since mammals love meat, and there's more meat here than there are grubs, the mammals um, would be dominant. Now, that's, of course, not the setting at the beginning of the game, because there's not any meat here. There is, in fact, one grub, which is what my guys like, one meat, which is what Jen's guys like, and that's why there's nobody dominant here in the forest yet. But you can bet that's going to change. And dominance is probably going to change hands several times over the course of the game. So, that's the starting situation. We've each got our seven workers, and we're ready to go. Now, there's a food chain with mammals all the way here at the top by reptiles, birds, amphibians, and then here we are down at the bottom, almost at the bottom, arachnids. Insects are at the very, very bottom. So it's good to be at the top of the food chain because that lets you break ties in certain circumstances in the game. So Jen, ties break in her favor. However, um, arachnids get to go first. The lower you are in the food chain, the faster you act. Which is why over here on the initiative track, I am currently the first player. So I get to go first. And that means I get to place the first of my workers. Although, you know, each of us are going to place seven workers. So it's not that much of an advantage. With only, you know, if you were playing a five or six player game, it, you know, the more players there are, the much bigger deal it is to be able to go first. But anyway, so what am I going to do? Well, you know what? I think... I think I'm going to start off strong. I'm going to go straight to Glaciation, which means when this activates, I am actually going to take a Tundra Tile. And there's all, you know, this, this sea is already frozen over, and that freeze is going to expand from here into a touching tile. And you can probably bet I'm going to freeze out the mountains so that Jen's mammals up here hunkered in the mountains are going to feel it. Maybe. Well, we'll see. Um, you know, I'll have to decide later. But that's my first action. And you know, I, I'm, I, I figure I'm kind of going aggressive. Let's just, you know, particularly because spiders, they have a special power. They get a free competition action while everybody else has to spend their tokens to come here. And this is basically where you fight, where my cubes can destroy your cubes. And um, I get to do it once for free because that's what arachnids do. They're a very aggressive species. So I'm doubling down on aggression and I'm putting glaciers out as well. Although it's interesting. Glaciers are a great way to try to make another, um, an, another species extinct. But the mammals, their special power is they're very good at avoiding extinction. The birds, they're good at migration. The insects, they're good at speciation. The reptiles, they're good at um, avoiding regression. Everybody's got their own special thing. But what the heck, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to come straight over here and start um, doing some glaciers. Not, I'm not, and I should say, by the way, I am far from an expert in this game. For the most part, I'm just trying to demonstrate how the game works. I'm not necessarily going to be doing the smartest strategies here. Please bear that in mind, because this is a big, heavy, complicated game. But uh, hopefully, at the end of this run-through, you'll, you'll get an idea of how the game plays and how, the, how it functions and feels. But anyway, so that was my first action. Now, what is Jen going to do? Well, you know what? I think she's going to be more of a live and let live type. She, instead of going, you know, because the, uh, the competition and glaciation, those are attack spaces, basically. Jen, she is going to go to adaptation. She is going to choose, because you can see there's these four randomly chosen things here. Jen is going to evolve mammals so that in addition to eating meat, they could also go for seeds, or they could thrive on sunlight, or more seeds, or they could really double down and get even more thriving off of meat. So Jen's going to adapt. And now it's my turn. You know what? Heck, if Jen's getting in there, I better adapt as well. And you know what? Then I think Jen says to heck with it. She's going to grab the last adaptation. And boom, just like that, all the adaptations are gone. You'll notice there's only three spaces, and there's four things to adapt, so one of these four will not get grabbed. All right, so then Jen grabbed. Now it's my turn again. I think I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to try to dominate, because that's... There's several ways you can earn victory points in the game, but probably the main one is through domination. So I'm the first one to try and dominate. Jen, I think she... Um, she will do some speciation. Now, that, this is the way, this is the main way that you get more cubes on the board. You know, because your, your species will die out. They will get hit by glaciers and that'll kill them off. But then speciation allows them to propagate and put more of them on the board. And now it's interesting. Depending on where you speciate, if you speciate, 
into wetlands or the sea, you can put four cubes on the board, three cubes into forests, jungles, or um, savannas, two cubes into desert or mountains, and only one into a tundra. But there's another thing. Normally, when you're putting one of your markers on the board, you want to take the leftmost space, because that will let you go first. But in the case of speciations, you can see the spaces you choose give you access to different things. If Jen chooses this leftmost space, she'll get to speciate first, but she'll have to do it adjacent to food tiles. And, you know, and she's already kind of spread around on food tiles. Maybe if she takes this second spot, she can speciate around sun tiles. And that means she could expand over here, maybe into the savanna, where maybe she would be all by herself. Because there's a lot more points. Seven points to be in a savanna versus four points to be top dog in a desert. So, Jen, I think she'll grab the second space over and try to speciate around the sunnier climes of the world. Okay, and so now it's my turn again. I've got four more actions to take. What else do I want to do? Um, I'm going to dominate some more. I'm just going to dominate! And so Jen says, well, you know what? She, maybe she better start dominating as well and get in on that action. All right, I'm down to three left. What else do I want to do? Um, you know what? I think I'd like to do some wanderlust, explore the world, maybe find some more new areas. Jen says... I'm going to dominate some more. So both of us are going to take two stabs at domination at the end of the round. I'm down to my, my, this is my second to last piece. Let's see here. You know what? I think I want to get some more characters on the board as well. I'm going to speciate, but I'm going to be first. Jen left the food space wide open to me. And that might work out pretty well because, heck, when I adapt, maybe I'll adapt so that I enjoy meat and then I could expand out of a meat area as well. We'll see how well that works out. Now, Jen's down. You know what I think she's going to do? She's going to grab initiative. Jen would like to become the first player. And this is my last guy. Where's he going to go? There's one, I could do one more domination if I wanted. But I got to, I mean, early in the game, I don't know if I'm going to be able to control three tiles. Each one of these means I try to dominate an, an individual tile. I don't know if I'm going to have three tiles that I dominate at the end of this first round. So maybe I want to do something else. In fact, what I could do is I could do some migration so that if I need to, after everything else happens, I could migrate some of my cubes around and muscle in on Jen's territory and then use my um, competition to, you know, to push her out. What the heck? I'll do some migration, and now here is Jen's last action. What is she going to do? Or actually, do I want to do migration? No, I want to do abundance. I think I'm going to do some abundance, which means we can find new food sources and new ways to survive in areas that already exist. And so, Jen's last area action, maybe she'll do some migration. Or, you know what? No, I think, I think, I think she'll do some more speciation and just try to propagate even more. And she will do it centered around seeds, because there's these two seeds. So, she'll be able to um, speciate over in that area. Although, I mean, she could go, you know, over here. Um, seeds would let her muscle into my jungle. But so would water. And actually, let's, let's have it go for water because um, you know, then she could speciate maybe into this wetlands as well. So she could like jump right into my backyard for area control. All right, so that's it, folks. We have finished the first half. We are done planning. And like I said, please don't take anything I'm about to do as you know, evidence of smart tactical or strategic thinking because this is a complicated game. But um, this is it now. We move on to the planning. And we, like I said, we go top down and then from left to right. So let's get going. First of all, Jen took the initiative. And what that means is she now gets to jump. And in future rounds, she will be the first player. But what's even better, when um, this is the only place that does this. When you, when you, when you do, an, you, you get to basically move forward one. If Jen were like several backs, she'd get to move forward one. So she gets closer and closer to first player. But after you've done that, you get to take this and place it anywhere else. So really, doing initiative is a two for one. You get to do initiative and you get to um, you know, use this somewhere else. Now, if you were playing with more players and you have fewer action, that's really cool. In a two-player game where you have seven actions, getting an eighth action isn't quite that big a deal, but still, it's nice. What else does Jen want to do? Does she want to speciate some more and get even more guys on the board? Does she want to try to you know, vie for even more dominance? Because she's speciating twice. Does she want to try and compete and try to kill off some of my cubes after I've tried to kill off some of hers? And it's interesting, this is another one where my guy, my special power is, I could attack anybody in any region. But if Jen, say, chose this spot, she could attack anybody in tundra, desert, 
or forest regions. If she chooses this one, it's tundra, savanna, or mountains. So um, this is another place where, depending on where you choose, um, you know, it, give, it, you know, it, it gives you more or less control over where you're going to attack. Nope. Jen, she's going peaceful, all peaceful all the time. I think she's just going to try and grow and grow and grow. She's going to do even more speciation. Let's have it all the way over here off near the grassland. So that was our first action initiative. Jen took initiative and she's going to do another action. Now we move on to adaptation. Jen was the first one here. And so that means she can grab any one of these tiles, and that means her species of adapt so that they can do more than thrive off of meat. For instance, they could grab seeds. And so now, all mammals throughout the world like meat, but they also like seeds. And that has an immediate impact on the game. And let me show you what that is. Remember, over here in the forest, there was equilibrium. Each of us had one species here, and they had access to one type of food we like. You know, um, Jen, or Jen had access to meat, I had access to grubs. But now, Jen's species also like seeds. So this guy has access to three things he likes. That makes him three times more powerful, and that means Jen has just taken control of the forest. She is the dominant species there. Doesn't matter. Even if I had like five species here, it wouldn't matter. Jen is still dominant because she has access to more. Now, what's interesting is I now get to take, I get to adapt. And I could take this other seed and then, you know, boom, equilibrium is returned here and um, nobody would be dominant. But I'm thinking about doing something else. I'm thinking about instead of doubling down seeds, I'm going to adapt to sun. So, arachnids thrive on grubs, and they thrive on sunlight as well. Now, that doesn't really help me here. It doesn't change anything. Um, but, bear in mind, there's abundance coming a little bit later, and I'm the only one doing abundance, and I might try to spread some more sunshine around in the world. And, uh, we'll see how well that works. Okay. Ugh. I think I'm doing this right. Alright, so anyway, so Jen gets one more. Uh, she's got one more here. So she could grab some more seeds, or she could grab some meat. Either way, she's doubling down on something she's already got. I think she'll grab some more seeds. All right. So now, this guy, basically, the power for, and, and the, for the purposes of determining um, cones, uh, you know, local dominance, you take the number of cubes you've got in a region and multiply it Oh, I'm sorry, no, not the number of cubes. You, you take the, the number of, of food resources and multiply it by how much you like it. So, the, um, you know, this is two, this is four. I mean, so Jen is super powerful there in the forest. It'd be very, very tough with my one little grub to take control over the forest. But hopefully I'm not making a stupid move, because now we're done with the adaptation. Nobody grabbed this meat. That means later on, it's going to potentially regress in the future, and that might be a problem for a player. But probably won't be, but we'll worry about that in the next round, because that'll happen in the next round that it regresses. Now, I'm the only person who chose abundance. I can take any of these tiles and move it somewhere. I am going to take this sunlight tile. And now I can place it. I you could almost argue this game actually has a touch of intelligent design to it because you know it's not like any of the ancient animal species could determine what where more sun was going to shine, and now suddenly there's going to be more sunlight in the world. And so where do I want to put this? I can put it on any empty uh, space, you know, on, on any of these outer edges. Now, if I put it over here, suddenly my cube is... Because um, remember, I like sunlight and I like grubs. So this cube um, likes this twice and this once. So this cube is basically worth three. Um, this cube is... Uh, but this one is still um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I still wouldn't win that. But I could put more sunlight, say... Let's see, where do I want to go? I, um, I could put more sunlight over here in the mountains, as an example, let's just say. Just for fun. All right, so I, I put some more sunlight in the mountains. There, it's, it's, and now Jen doesn't care about that, because her species doesn't really benefit from sunlight. But mine does. And that has made the mountains much more attractive to me, because there's, while there's two grubs, there's also two mountains here as well. Or, I'm sorry, two sunlights here as well. And so the mountains are maybe a good place for the spiders to move into later. Maybe. We'll see. Oh my gosh, there's so much going on in this game. It's, it's so much to think about. 
But anyway, so that was it. I was the only person who did abundance. Now, there, the wasteland and depletion are empty. These things in, the, in subsequent rounds are going to slide down here, and you might have to worry about um, you know, gr grubs and stuff you know, getting hit in wasteland or um, depletion. But anyway, we're not worrying about those right now. Now we go into glaciation, and this is where I now get to place one tundra. And where do I want to hit? Let's see here. So, I, it has to spread from here, and um, you know, obviously I want to hit a place that's really going to benefit me more. Like for instance, I could expand over here into the mountains. Now, when you, um, when you do, what is it called, glaciation, there's actually, everybody has a nice little summary of what all the steps are on their player aids. So glaciation, select a non-tundra tile adjacent to an existing tundra tile, remove, temporarily set aside the stuff that's there, place a new tundra tile, remove all elements touching three, which won't happen right now, but that could happen later, gain victory points for um, you know, placing next to existing adjacent tundra tiles. Of the removed species, place one belonging to each animal back on the tile, and then displace the rest to the players. So I think I'm going to do it. Um, the Ice Age has spread over here to the mountains, which is, seems reasonable, you might imagine. So, what happens is, boom, the tundra. Okay, now, we put these back, and as it's set, well, actually, okay, we do several things in order. First of all, I place one. Then, um, I remove all elements touching three tundra tiles. There's only two tundra tiles. If there was a third tundra tile, say, right here, then this food would disappear from the world because it was surrounded by three tundra tiles. So, we skip that. Then, um, we gain bonus victory points. Because the tundra I just placed is next to one, so it's next to one, that means I score one victory point. If I put a tundra next to three other tundra tiles, I'd get six victory points. Um, so, anyway, so I just scored a point. I'm the first on the board. Hooray! Um, now, of the removed species, place one in, back on the tile and the other... So, one comes back, one of Jen's species comes back, and the other one goes back to the gene pill. So Jen just lost one of her species, but she's still here alone, so she still maintains her dominance. Okay, so that was it for Tundra stuff. Okay. And now, let's move on to speciation. I am the first. Jen is going to spread a lot. I'm only doing it once. So. Let's come over here, and I have to spread from an epicenter of meat. So that means there's two meats here. I could spread from, uh, I could spread here, or I could spread here. And again, I'm not saying I've made necessarily the smartest moves in the world. I'll stop repeating that over and over again. But you know, it, it just does bear repeating. Let's see here. So, hmm. Now, where do I want to spread? Um, I. Well, see, here's the tricky thing. Um, this is a nice area for me because I'm good with sunlight, but Jen's good with meat and seeds. So even if I try to spread here, again, I wasn't thinking about this very smartly. Jen owns this area. But, um, all right, and let's see. If I spread into forest, I get to put three down. If I spread into desert or mountains, I get to put two down. So since I'm spreading near um, meat, I think I'll spread over here, and that means I get to put three in the forest. Uh, and I get to spread, you know, since I've chosen this meat instead of this one, I can spread into this zone, this zone, and this zone. On the flip side, if I spread this meat, I get to go into this zone and this zone, so that's only two, so I'll spread this one. I'm spreading from here. I get to put three in forest. Tundra, I only get to put one, so I'm here by myself in the tundra. And I, let's see, and this one's tundra, so I get to put one in the tundra also. Okay, so that was my speciation, because you only get to place one, and so I've got some. Now, Jen's going to do a lot of speciation, starting with, she gets to pick the epicenter of a sun tile. And there's this one, this one, and this one. So, I think she'll choose this one, which means she gets to put one on the tundra, one on the tundra, and in the desert, how much does the desert get? A desert gets two. So, she gets to put two over here in the desert and double it on her desert. Then, she's going to spread in the water area. All right, so she could choose this one or this one. Now then, um, and here's where I've started to actually make some very, very poor planning choices. Because, so Jen, well, okay, I think what she'll do is, all right, she's gonna, she, she chose a water space. Yeah, yeah, she chose a water space. She'll choose this one instead of this one. So that means she can expand into, into this wetlands and this jungle. Expanding into wetlands means she gets to put four down, four cubes into the wetlands and into the jungle, as you can see right over here, she gets to put three. But she's got a problem um, with this wetlands. All these species, oh great, hey, we love it here in the wetlands. But the wetlands only provides water, grass, and grubs. 
Jen can't thrive on any of those things. So, um, so unfortunately, most of these species that just po popped up in the wetlands, they're going to go extinct because they have nothing to eat. Now, for the ones she put over here, Jen, they, these guys do thrive on seeds. And since there's some seeds here, these guys will do okay. But these guys, they're going to get wiped out. But not before they potentially get to dominate the wetland. So we'll worry about that in a minute. And now Jen, she gets to do even more at the epicenter of a grassland. Let's see, so she could do it here or here. I think she'll choose this one because this one's close to meat. Oh, whoops, I forgot. Also, she got to put another one here in the tundra because... No, no, she didn't because she chose this water. She's going to choose this meat which means she gets to put, or I'm sorry, no, no, this grass. I meant this grass. So with that grass, she gets to put another in the tundra. She gets to put, how many in savanna? She gets to put three in the savanna, which is another spot for her that's a problem because there's nothing growing in the savanna. Again, uh, I'm not playing necessarily so smart, but you know what? Over here in the desert, it's not too bad because... Um, let's see, Desert gets to do two, and these guys, all five of these species, will be able to feed off of this meat that's in the desert. Now see, with the benefit of hindsight, Jen really should have um, done abundance. If she'd put this grass over here, let's say over here, as an example, then all of these guys would be, I'm sorry, not grass, these seeds, then all these guys would be able to live off these seeds. But she didn't do it. That would have been a smarter move for her, but, you know, again, she didn't do that. She did dominance. That's fine. So anyway. That's it for the speciation. Everybody is added. And by the way, the, uh, the insect player, if there's an insect player, gets to automatically do one every turn, even if they didn't place any workers here. So now we're doing Wonderlust. I'm the only player who has decided to engage in um, Wonderlust. Oh, by the way, we should actually take a moment to determine all of that speciation. Let's see. Oh, no, actually, no. No dominance would change because even though Jen's species outnumber me four to one over here, I'm still dominant because my species actually get to thrive on what's here. All these guys, they're going to go extinct pretty soon, but um, so I'm still dominant. So we're not really worrying about that. Let's do Wanderlust. I am the only person who chose Wanderlust. That means I can take any three of these tiles and expand in any direction on the board. Um, and I get to place one of these uh, pieces on that space. Right, you know, and specifically, place an available tile on an empty hex, place an available element, you know, one of those elements, gain victory points by putting it next to adjacent tiles, and in food chain order. Now, this is interesting. All players get to partake in the Wonderlust action, not just me, but everybody else. So, where if I say put this desert over here, I have the opportunity to move any of my guys adjacently into there, and so does Jen. So, both of us ha would have the opportunity to move into that desert. So I've got to think long and hard about how I am going to expand here. And in all honesty, wow. I mean, first of all, what type of area do I want to create? Do I want to create savanna? Do I want to create desert? Because savanna, having dominance over savanna can get you seven points as opposed to four. Now, um, and the tricky thing is, since Jen has spread everywhere, I was originally thinking, hey, you know what? I, you know, what I could do, no, I can't. I was thinking, hey, I'd put this someplace over here where I could spread and um, I would be the only one to be able to move cubes. But if I do this, Jen could move... You know, actually, that's not too bad, because you know, I think I will put it here. Am I going to put desert? And I will put desert. because, Or I'm sorry, not desert, savanna. Because winning in savanna is worth 7 points, as opposed to desert, which is only worth 4 points. So I will expand this over here. Now, I also get to place an available element. There are four elements to choose from. I think I'll make it a grub because I love grubs and Jen doesn't. I'll slap it right there and then suddenly, hey, the forest has two grubs in it in addition to these two seeds. Although, let's see, um, yeah. Now this still doesn't give me dominance in this region. Not quite anyway, but Let's see, because Jen's got one, two, you know, uh, two times two is four times, she's got six, I've got four. So that's not good. But if I put this grub over here, because I expanded over in this area, let's say, then Jen's got two, four, six, I've got two, three, four, because I've still only got one son. So I can't really, so I'll just go ahead and put it here and I'll put some more grubs. And so Savannah grows out of the forest. Okay, and now that didn't change dominance. Jen, because of her double meat, double seeds, is still dominant. She still gets to keep her, her cone. But now, after you place it, first of all, I get bonus points. And that's another thing too. I want to put this in such a way 
that, um, you know, if I put it next to two, I'll get two victory points. If I do it like this, I'll only get one victory point. Hmm. But, yeah, you know, actually, I think I will put it over here instead. Although, but there's already a grub there. But that's fine. I'll put it here. The grub stays. But I'll, and I'll make the grub appear here. So now I'm getting closer to domination in that region, although I still haven't gotten it because Jen um, is, is still in the lead. So I put it there. Now both, all right, so, and so because this is tiled next to two other tiles, I get two victory points. One, two. And now in, um, in um, was it food chain order, I think? Yeah, in food chain order. So Jen gets to go first. She's at the top of food chain. Jen can move her mammals from the jungle or the forest over here and try to gain dominance in the savanna. Now, Jen's got a total of four she can move. I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six I could move. And so Jen knows she can't beat me. And the other problem here, too, is if she moves cubes into this area, the only thing to eat in this area is grubs, and Jen can't eat grubs. So guys she moves over here will go extinct, but not before they potentially get dominance. Now, these guys, if they stay where they are, they live because they can survive off of these seeds. So I think, even though Jen could move some in there, she's not going to. She's going to stay. But me, I will move. And you know what? What the heck? I'm just going to move one. I mean, if, if or, you know what, heck, if Jen had moved one, I might have moved two. But I'll just move one. Because, and so one single guy there, all by himself. And I'm dominant in that region because I'm there all by myself. And you know, even if Jen had moved lots of cubes in here, I'd still be dominant because I like grubs and Jen doesn't. So that gave me uh, an extra place where I've got control. So I'm in control of, I'm the dominant species, or the dominant animal. I'm the dominant animal type in three regions. Jen is the dominant animal. But Jen definitely has more species in more regions than me. And that'll come in later. Well, it'll come in very soon. But anyway, so that was Wanderlust. And you can see all these didn't get taken. There are going to be three more. So now nobody's migrating. Migrating means we could actually pick up our cubes and move them around. If Jen had migrated, she could pick up some of these guys and move them over here to a place where they wouldn't die. But nobody migrated. Birds get, um, whenever birds migrate, they get to move two spaces instead of one, but they still have to activate it. Now, competition. Jen didn't do it, but I get competition for free. I get, in one place where Jen is, I get to kill one of her cubes just like that. And I believe the, um, I will wipe out this one. And so, now this guy does not go back to Jen's pool. This species has been eliminated from the planet. It gets removed from the game. So Jen just lost a species permanently. And now that she's not in the forest, boom, I am the dominant species there again. Because even though there's more food supplies that Jen likes, it doesn't matter because I'm here all by myself. Because I'm a nasty spider and I wiped out those little lemurs that happen to be living in the forest. Because it's um, spider eat lemur in this game. So that was the only competition. And now finally, at the end of the round, we're finally going to do domination. I get to do two, and Jen gets to do two. And that will trigger the end of the round. But you know what? We've already been going for 32 minutes. And I need a drink of water pretty bad, and I need to change my battery. So here's what we're going to do. Um, basically, we're, we're going to check out area... Four of, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight regions. Four of these will be judged. Two chosen by me, two chosen by Jen. And we will be judged not only on how many cubes we have, but also where we have cones. And that will give us the opportunity, potentially, to play cards. It can be huge, swingy things. So, there's um, the last, the, you know, the domination, which is in you know, the title, is about to happen. If you'd like to see that, you can hit the button that's on screen and go to the extended playthrough after I get a drink of water and maybe have a pit stop as well because and switch my batteries. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts because you've seen just about everything except for the domination. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.